Good Monday morning, guys. I'm Greg. This is Stephanie. This is our podcast, A Living in Key West. We're also real estate agents. So if you've ever thought about getting some property down here in the Florida Keys for a dream home or a vacation rental, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Mrs. Stephanie, what is up? I also would like to point out, we're rocking our merch hard right now. <laughs> We are. You got your Winnie for Mayor shirt on. I got my Living in Key West hat. I also have on your uh, Good Vibes sweatshirt. It looks good on you. It does. It fits me perfectly fine. Yeah. I would have put mine on, but Winnie was laying on my sweatshirt. And it's not that it's terribly cold in here. It's just that we both look like bums. And it was the <laughs> quickest solution was just to put on a sweatshirt <laughs> as opposed to change our clothing. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. Technically, it's Sunday. It is. We've had a very busy week. Very busy. But great. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, mm -hmm. some might say. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're about to head into another week. Yeah. Science. Yeah. So what's up? Uh, well, today we went to the Artisan Market at Higgs Beach, which was fun we really went because there's this uh vendor there that does like mediterranean food so we got um red pepper roasted red pepper hummus and but they didn't have the olives we like yeah we always go for the grilled olives and they don't it's like they have i don't know we also got there a little late in fairness so we got uh that we got baba ganoush which is like a smoked eggplant dip it's delicious and we got some kalamata olives and was that it no Oh, and I got uh, grape leaves that are, like, mm -hmm. stuffed with rice. They're delicious. So we went for that, which we got that. And then the White Street Pier is right there. So we actually walked all the way to the end of the White Street Pier and walked around and looked at the water. And that was the first time we had walked all the way to the end. We kind of walked there, like, we, at the we've entrance. It, but... Yeah, but we walked all the way to the end. So it was, the water was really beautiful, and it's very sort of, like, over cast and like gloomy-ish sort of today even though it hasn't rained it's just been a little overcast but it was like breezy and nice it was still really nice to go out there and check out the water yeah. and all that so yeah it was the a nice... question is will it ever rain i hope so fun fact 0 0.09 inches this entire year yeah we have not had rain like not nine inches 0 0.09 yeah we've had very little rain so it would be really nice to get a rain especially because allergens are really bad right now like the pollen and Chicken i know both, people's butts. yeah both of us have been sneezing and itchy eyes and all you know our girls are experiencing it too just really itchy and kind of like stuffed up and stuff mm -hmm. so it's nice when it rains because i feel like that knocks it out of the air a little bit and it just feels cleaner like the air just feels cleaner for at least you know like a day or something but also like our plants would be really happy for some rain they so. would i will you know i haven't watered our orchids mm-hmm I didn't water them. I'm kind of on an every other day time thing. I look at them, make sure they're still doing okay with water, but uh, at least for the Vandas, the, the bare root ones, mm -hmm. but uh, that's orchid talk for you guys. Um, but I haven't watered them because it was supposed to rain a lot today. So what I didn't want to do was water them and then it rained, but it hasn't even freaking drizzled. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then as soon as you go out there to water them, it's going to pour. Gonna... <laughs> Every time I look, it's like the time gets pushed back. It was like supposed to rain at like six this morning. And then when we got up, it wasn't. Then it was like noon and then it was later. And then I just looked, it says like eight. So hopefully at some point we will get some of that. There's a ton of rain out there. Like you said, Marathon already I got thought I three read inches. Where Marathon said it's already had a, an inch of rain or something. Oh, an inch. Yeah. Something, I don't know something. what I said. Yeah. So. But they've already broken our record for the year. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So that's what's going on today um yesterday we did our like new place it's not completely new but the place that we were like wow. eating for this week like the new place we were eating for this week so we decided to go to hogfish again now we went to hogfish the first time like two years ago maybe with our friends when we came down for they came, we were here for a month on vacation in Sugarloaf, Lower mm -hmm. Sugarloaf, and they came and stayed with us for like a week of our month vacation. And while they were here, we went, we came down and we went to Hogfish. 
And I remember like it was fine. There was nothing super memorable about it. I don't think any of us were like super impressed or anything. It wasn't bad. It was just like whatever. But we decided to go again because it is like a really nice setting. It's in Stock Island if you're not familiar. It's right on the water. Um, so it's a really fun, like cool setting. And if you want to just like go do something that's like at a marina or whatever, There's like it's a huge tarpon off the dock. Yeah. And I mean, it was extremely busy, like very busy. Um, they set us right down, even though they're really busy. The service was really good. I thought, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, what did you, I mean, I put it in the mediocre yeah. category, unfortunately. I know. Um, now I also always want to be fair and we are gluten free. We so gluten -free. we, did not get like a fried fish sandwich or right. anything like that. Right. Uh, I do remember one of our friends that was with us. She enjoyed her meal quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember what she got. But um, mm -mm. right. So they. So I mean, they're they're like um, f fried fish sandwich or their like specialty sandwich or whatever. I mean, most of their stuff is like fried. Like, or you can get like you know uh, they had like a I think it was like a grouper Reuben which comes mm -hmm. on rye bread. Probably if we could eat gluten, I would have considered that because I love a Reuben. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we just cannot get. So it's very possible that some of their stuff that is fried or some of their specials or things that contain like bread, like sandwiches or whatever. Yeah, because a lot of people are really good. It. It's a great yeah. ambiance. It is. I, I put it there with like Blue Hot Heaven. Same. Um, same yeah. vibe ish, but different key. Well, yeah, and I think like not the same. Well, yeah, kind of similar vibe, but, like, I I think Blue Heaven's better food-wise. Yes. Like, you know, Blue Heaven, I think, is also more expensive, so that... Yeah. But, like, I even kind of feel like with Hogfish... But hogfish wasn't cheap. No, it was not cheap, and I feel like with Hogfish, you know... We got... What did I get? So, I got the blackened shrimp platter that came with coleslaw and fries and fries. to be fair those i thought the shrimp was very good the shrimp was good the fries not and we like fries mm -hmm. you know and so like i would say you know that would be something because we we don't eat gluten we're not so strict that we won't eat something that has like been fried in the same oil where some people are like very very strict like they have to have like you know they can't eat french fries that are fried in the same oil that like something breaded was fried in. so we don't observe that so we got French fries, but like the fries were just kind of like, meh, you know, they were and like, I got a mm, burger and I was meh. looking forward to it. Yeah. But it, I it was will say promising. It was huge. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't know. Just meh. Yeah. And like, I did not like my coleslaw. They had excellent Pepsi. I did get the a Pepsi. Pepsi was delicious. <laughs> but once again, I, I forgot. I thought your shrimp was very good. The, the shrimp was good. Shrimp was the very shrimp was, good. yeah, the shrimp was but I don't think I like the shrimp enough to justify me going back. Correct. Like, so that's, yeah, that was like the well, one thing I'll, I would I'll say go was. To one love for the shrimp at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you had the same right, price and you had point, the, but you get a little bit more. And you had a burger and, and it had, it came with like grilled onions and mushrooms. And then you got to pick your cheese. So you ordered blue cheese and it came with some, I think it was cheddar cheese or Colby Jack or something, something melted over the top. Which was really good. Just, I don't know. Yeah, just it wasn't what you ordered, yeah. and it, yeah, it just, and she tried to correct it. And she I, did. I said it, so. It's not again. It's nothing against her. No, 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 no. Waitress, but no. She, and actually, Greg didn't even say anything. And then she noticed and said, "Oh, that's not blue cheese. Can I bring you blue cheese?" So I mean, that's why I say the service was good. We were set very quickly. Our right. order was taken quickly. She was very attentive. She caught when there was a mistake. Like the service was great, um, and everyone was real sweet to the girls. We'd had the both the little girls with us and they were sweet to them. And, um, and the location is great. But like, again, I just feel like it's those sorts of places where if you're here and you want to go somewhere for the ambiance, that's a great place Fantastic. to go. It's if you want to eat at a Marina, it's, it's very lively. They do have a bar there with a bunch of drinks. Maybe their drinks are the good. Path it too, is so off the beaten it's path. It's kind of cool. It's in the back of stock Island. Yeah, absolutely. So it's an experience the same way that like blue heaven, if you want that experience, it's an experience. I think when we talk about restaurants, we're probably, at least for me, I'm basing the vast majority of my oh, hey. feedback yeah. off of the food itself. Yep. So go, it's an experience, it's something to do. But if it's like, gosh, where's the best burger? Like we wouldn't send you there, right? Yeah. Or where, you know, where's the best? Now they may, again, they may have an incredible 
fried fish sandwich. We can't tell you. Yeah. So it's worth it's worth a try. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're not saying don't go. No, 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 no. But uh, yeah, if you're like, I want to have like an amazing. Sorry, preheating our oven. If you want to have an am- just an amazing like culinary experience, don't go to Hot Fish. Correct. Because you know, yeah, there's better places. And, and there's Key West, and I say this all the time on our live, but Key West and Stock Island have fantastic food. Absolutely. So you I know. think that's the other thing that when we're talking about it, it's like we know there are so many other places you can go that it's like if you're if you're looking for phenomenal food you can find it yeah but if you're looking for just like a fun super casual experience on the water with like sort of like classic key west seafood like a fried fish sandwich some fries or you know and a pickle like go that would you know that would do it for you but if you're looking for the best possible food like i probably would not go there for all right purpose. We've rambled on long enough about hogfish. Yeah. Let's talk about another restaurant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what else did we do? We went, uh, we had an inspection on a house. Yes. So we went to Key Colony Beach. Yep. And hung out at a house for a couple of hours, which yep. was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Pretty fun. The inspection went well. Yep. Everything's looking pretty good. Just the usual stuff. So that's yep. good. And. Yeah, and also, oh, so I went to a speaker on Monday. So during high season, which is like the winter and spring season here, um, friends at the Key West Library, that's a, it's a, a, like a board here, basically. It's been around for like 50 years and they support the library and its efforts, but also they have like other activities that they do. So they always plan, they plan like a speaker series. So they'll have like people who have just published books come and do, and speak about their book. So on Monday I went to uh one I should look up her name before I um go too much further but there was a a woman who um recently released her book and it's about sperm whales. She's like a um marine oh, yeah. biologist and she has ties. So her name is Galen Rosenwax. It's G A E L I N and then Rosen R O S E N W A K S. And her Instagram is Galen Go Explore. Um, anyway, so she just she released this book that's called uh, Sperm Whales The Gentle Goliaths of the Ocean. And it's really cool because she. Um, I would have called them the Great Danes of the Ocean, the, but yeah, absolutely. Well, me. actually, that's it's so true because that's what she she was talking about. So, throughout her career, she's studied different um, like species, yeah, at depth. And there's a whole story around her connection to sperm whales and la la la. But um, so she's been studying sperm whales since uh, I think 2018 is when she went on her first like expedition to the Island of, I believe it's Dominica. It's here in the Caribbean somewhere. Um, and they have like their own, uh, like, I don't know if it's called a colony or pod or something of sperm whales, like a, a large number of sperm mm-hmm. whales inhabit this, the waters around this Island. And so they, she makes these expeditions or she does these expeditions, these trips where they go and they photograph them and everything. And so she was telling the stories about that in her speech. And she was talking about how they're very like, um, well, they're mammals, first of all. So it's first wild. And foremost, their life, span and timeline is very similar to ours so they'll live like into their 70s typically which is insane and they when so she was saying um one of the the her tie to sperm whales is that back in the day she lives at, she's from new england and there was a sperm whale who beached himself and um so she remembers going and seeing this beached sperm whale and they ended up long story short figuring out that he had pneumonia and were able to treat him which was like cutting edge at that time so they basically put these antibiotic pills into squid and like put them on a stick and fed it. They didn't know that it was like the first time I think that they had diagnosed and that they were feeding it and tr- figuring out how to treat them. So they ended up um, 
releasing him back into the wild because he was better, but he was only like five. Well, in the years since she's found out that sperm male sperm whales are typically, they stay with like the women, the matriarchs or the women um, of the families. They stay together like in pods. So it'll be like mom, grandma, aunts, whatever. And they take care of the babies. So male babies will stay with all of the women in the pod until they're about 12. So he was way too young to be away from his family. So, but probably he was sick or whatever. And, and that's why. Out. Yeah, maybe. So, um, no, at 12, they leave at 12. So yes, but if they're healthy and they stay with their mom and they're, yeah, they stay till they're 12, they stay till they're about 12 and then they get kicked out yep. and they either roam alone or they, um, get in what they call like a bachelor pod. So it's all the like single male, they young male whales and they get together. Yeah. Until they, you know, find someone and they have like a little family. And I think they then go off again because it seems like none of the male whales yes. like hang out. It's the mom, the grandma, the aunts who take care of the babies. Um, so I thought that was like really cool to learn. And then another story was they were saying, she said that, um, one time they dropped into the water on one of their expeditions and they saw a mom or like a single female, like full grown whale. And then they could see her calf, very small baby off in the distance. And they were just like, Oh, okay. Like normally you'll see, you know, other um, adult females with this mom, but they didn't. And so they're like, okay, whatever. Um, and they talked to each other with yes, like clicks. Yes. So each pod has their own language. So it sounds similar to us, but it's that they, they have their own way of speaking to each other and their own, I guess, like you would call it like a vernacular. Um, so they all talk to each other and you can see where they'll like coordinate movements. Like they'll click and then do the exact same thing. Like go, you know, they'll dive or they'll, yeah. And they eat squid. That's their main source of food, like giant, giant squid. Squids. So they, they are the most adept free divers in the ocean. They will go, down thousands and thousands and thousands of feet to the bottom of the ocean and they'll stay down for 45 minutes to an hour. So she said that, um, all of a sudden she, mom like clicked, like made a clicking noise and swam off and like went to the depths and the baby who had been kind of off in the distance immediately came over by Galen. I think that's what I said, right? Galen, Galen. And then, um, her mom travels with her too. So I think it was like Galen, her mom, who also does like the whale diving photography. and photography and everything and whoever else was on the expedition. And the baby came over right next to them and they were like, Oh, and then baby just stayed with them. So she figured out like after a few minutes that they were babysitting, they had been assigned babysitting duties by For this like mom. an hour. Because normally mom yeah. has, you know, sisters or her mom or whatever to watch the baby. And she didn't for whatever reason. And so, and I just thought it was really cool. Cause like, if you think about it, like they're also mammals, you know? So it's like to think that like, we're a lot closer probably. And I mean, that's like a once in a lifetime. That's experience. what she said. Yeah. yeah. That's what she said. And she said that the baby was so playful and just like a puppy, like you can, if you're watching me on video, like, you know, if you put your hand up and kind of like move your finger in a circle, the baby would like roll, like roll, like a puppy, like roll over and like was very just like playful and interested, not scared or anything. And they specifically like allow the whales to, um, sort of run the show in terms of like what their interactions are. They don't really approach the whales. They never touch the whales it's very like respectful and the whales sort of get to dictate like how close or like what the interaction is mm -hmm. or whatever. But, um, she said they're just like the most incredible animals and her, her talk was so cool. Like I, I was very, I was interested in it, but I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. Um, so yeah. And she's just, she has ties to the keys. Oh, this was the other story that I thought was kind of cool. So there, she said, so she is from New England, but she got very interested in the ocean very early on. Like she was a toddler when that whale beached himself up near her home. And um, so she's always been interested in the ocean ever since then. So she went to sea camp in Big Pine Key, which is, you know, whatever, 45 minutes away from here or whatever. Um, and so she has pictures of herself at sea camp. Well, then she was showing pictures of her like swimming with these sperm whales. And she mentioned that the same fins that she's wearing fins, right? 
Is that yep. what you call them? Yeah, Finn. Fins that she's wearing in this picture with the sperm whale from like a couple of years ago are the same ones that she got and used when she was at sea camp here when she was, you know, I don't know, a, a teenager. So I think they're yep. like 40 years old. But she was saying that she doesn't wear the large free diving um, flippers. Sorry, Naya's pacing around. She doesn't wear those because it gives her less control and she never wants to, because, you know, free diving flippers are so much longer. She never wants to um, accidentally like kick one of the whales or something. So she just wears her 40 year old <laughs> flippers on her worldwide expeditions yeah. diving. It's just kind of funny to think she got these flippers back in the day. And those are the same ones she uses, but all right. Anyway, so that was a really okay, cool, guys, go. you now know you don't need to go buy her book. No, you definitely Stephanie do. just filled you in on everything. No. Um, but no, go get her go get her stuff. Yeah, and follow her on Instagram. She just does really cool work and she's hey, so I think the other thing I really liked about it was I always find it to be so inspiring when you see people who are living their passion and are just so and it's and it's so cool to see because you know, I love the ocean. Obviously, we live here, but I'm not as passionate about it as she is. And it's just to like see how passionate she is and how we all have our own passions and things that I think we're meant to do on this earth. And she's certainly meant to do what she's doing. Like she's known since she was a toddler, you know, she just has that like desire to be in the ocean and to protect conservation, to protect the ocean, to interact with ocean, you know, beings or whatever. So I thought that was really cool too, but yeah, go follow her on Instagram, get her book, support her work. Um, I think she has some stuff on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And she just spoke at the Key West Library. It's free to go. Yep. You can go and you just gotta get meet a ticket. her. Yep. Gotta get a ticket. So that's that. Did that on Monday. All right. Um, oh, we had a guest oh podcast. Gosh. Yes, we did. We had our On our phone. podcast. That is a new series we are doing. Yep. Um, that was Tammy at the SPCA. So make sure you go watch that. That's going to be the video right before this one. Yep. And then this coming up week, we are doing another one with Mark from Backyards of Key West. Yes. So, and we have already interviewed with him for his podcast. And now we're returning the favor <laughs> and bringing him onto our podcast, our new series. Um, Island, Island Stories. Stories. Yeah. Yeah. I had to remember it, but Island yep. Stories. So, uh, and that's my goal is to try to drop one, those once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so every Thursday. Yep. So go check out the one that we just dropped about with Tammy. That one I've been told from multiple people. That's our best one yet. Yeah. And it's, it's our, really definitely our best Island stories one. <laughs> Absolutely. It's really good. So Tammy, well, first of all, Tammy's just such a delight. She's so sweet and so open and so passionate about animal rescue and advocacy and, you know, we've done a lot of rescue work. And so we, you know, we, we've kind of seen it all in, in, in a lot of ways and what they are doing here at the Florida Keys SPCA is just, it's so like amazing. Like just they're yep. not, only, to our podcast. Yeah, not only they're yeah. building, but like their programs, like their team, everything. Like it's, it's amazing. So the whole podcast is really about what they're doing. Um, they got some incredible programs incredible the facility programs, is incredible how they handle hurricanes and yep. tropical weather it's all insane and yeah and uh really in a good way yeah so and, go check uh, that out so go we don't want to give away too much yeah. so go and listen to our podcast that dropped thursday which was a couple days ago the today is sunday yep so go listen to that and then our one coming up for this week will be with mark from backyards of key west yep so we also took Naya to the vet so, yeah. you know, that's always fun. Yeah. And uh, she's pacing around right now. I will also share with you that we went through all of our wild blueberry juice. And I had oh, like yeah, we did. two days without it. I was very upset about that. You did. You were. Yeah. Is so that you're moping around the house all day? <laughs> past couple days i was like what's up but i reordered it just, and now so we're refilled so i'm happy about that yep we have our blueberry juice back if you were not if you did not listen to last week's podcast you don't know what i'm talking about it's wild blueberry juice from wyman's it's delicious it's very good for you new favorite drink so yeah we're all filled back up refilled yep so that's exciting 
That is exciting. Do you think we should do our house of the week? I don't know if there's time. We're going to our house of the week. And this house of the week is 311 Angel Amelia. Amelia. Man, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> 311 Amelia Street. This is actually right behind where we stayed for a couple of uh, a couple of months, six months yeah. on Catherine. But this one's at Amelia Street. It has been completely redone. It has two non-transient licenses. It is a four, three and a half, including uh, it's, it's actually it's a duplex. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it has a one, one in the back redone and then a three, two and a half up in the front remodeled mm -hmm. and uh it does have off street parking for at least one car mm -hmm. room for a swim spa to put in maybe even two if you wanted to like really spice it up and uh it was we had the pleasure of going to a broker's open house yep and uh so we went and walked it and it was in my opinion redone really nice it comes furnished mm -hmm. except for maybe a couple of the art pieces yep and uh really cool house Right now, it's listed at $2,095,000 square feet, 2,000 something. What is the square feet? Oh, sorry. I was getting distracted. I was reading. It's, I was doing a pretty good job. Yeah, 2,105. That's including the, the one one in the back, I'd imagine. Yeah. So, uh, but it's a really cool house, and they did a really good job. Uh, at least it seems like it. Yeah, and, and what I will say is this. There are a lot of people who redo houses in Key West. They buy these old historic houses and they'll renovate them. And you can tell a quality difference. You can tell. Like, you walk in and you can just look at little finishes and little, you know, little stuff that kind of indicates how much care was put into a renovation. And I will say that this renovation is absolutely one of the best that I've seen that we walked into. It's Without going over it with a... Fine yes, yes. At, with our eye looking at the finish work, yes. And also quickly. It's yeah. a it's an artist who did the renovation and she worked with her sister on the project who is an interior designer, and you can tell. This house is beautiful inside and out. The furniture. The furniture which is everything. included. Yeah. Is beautiful. It's all so modern. It's a duplex and pretty. For two, pretty much two million yep. bucks. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a legal duplex. You have both licenses, so theoretically you could run out both. You could long term run out both, or you could vacation run out. And it both. currently does have someone in the back unit, and they're on a month to month. Yeah. So yeah, I think they said they're getting around three thousand a yeah. month. You could probably up that a, yes. a thousand or so, but yes. um, you could also turn that into just uh, short term. And do monthly rentals and, you know, get even more. So, you could do vacation rentals. You could do, like, professional rentals, like, to nurses, yeah. traveling nurses. Traveling nurses. nurses, yep. Yeah. So there's Sky's a lot of possibilities. the limit. But, and Greg said the two swim spa thing also because they currently have it fenced off. Watch her. So, um, oh, sorry. Winnie wants to get up here. And she's taking my computer with her. Um, they currently have it, they have it fenced off so that the front tenant and the back tenant have their own outside spaces. So that's why Greg was saying two swim spots. Maybe. You put one yeah, on. Yeah. If you wanted to. Definitely one. You you could put one in the back as well, potentially for um, if you did like the back as an Airbnb rental and you wanted to yeah. have like a pool or whatever. So it's a great, and it's in a fantastic location. Yeah, it is in a great location. You're uh, really close to Duval. You're like a block and a half to Duval. Yeah. So Half a block to Thomas Street. You're probably... Huh. One, right there in Whitehead. two, you're maybe like five blocks to Blue Heaven, roughly. Yep. Close to Fort Zach. Yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great location. Anywhere you are you're in the West, you're close to everything. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's our house of the week. The week. Yep. Go, 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 go. All righty. Stephanie, hmm. is there anything fun and exciting coming up? Yeah, so oh. there's some different stuff on the calendar this week. Um, this month is the month where um, March is the month of celebrating Tennessee Williams. Hmm. So there's some different things about Tennessee Williams going on. So um, 
exam so one example would be uh March 20th and 21st, which would be Monday and Tuesday. Um, the Tropic Cinema is celebrating Tennessee Williams. This property is condemned. So in partnership with Key West Art and Historical Society, Tropic Cinema presents this property is condemned, starring Natalie Wood, Robert Redford, and Charles Bronson. The screening is part of the annual celebration during the month of March of Tennessee Williams and his many years living and working in Key West. So that's the 20th and 21st. Then the 23rd, The Smoke and Sizzle of Tennessee Williams. It's a collection of readers presents a program that explores the more sensual side of Tennessee Williams presented by the Tennessee Williams Museum and Fringe Theater at 7 p.m. at the Little Jazz Room Club at 821 Duke Fall Street. Uh, tickets are available online starting at $23. A glass of house wine or Prosecco is included. So those are kind of two cool things that are happening this week. And then the 24th. <laughs> Bless you. Mm, sorry, guys. Jeez, my keys. Allergies, I'm telling you. So the 24th, this is the exciting thing happening this week, in my opinion. Um, so Tropic Cinema is premiering Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Oh, yeah. Which Man, is... We tried to get tickets, but... Yeah. So if... Uh, I don't know. Judy Bloom, if you're... Uh, if you're listening. If you're listening, hit us up. We'll go live from there. We'll get you all the publicity you need. <laughs> so... Um, this is really cool. So it says, in cooperation with Lionsgate, Tropic Cinema presents a special advanced screening and fundraiser on Friday, March 24th, and stars Rachel McAdams and Abby Ryder Fortson, producer James L. Brooks, writer director Kelly Fr Freeman Craig, producer Julie Ansel and Amy Brooks, and author Judy Bloom. We'll introduce this look at Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, before its April 28th nationwide theatrical release, and the film will be shown in all three of the Tropics theaters. Carper Theater tickets are sold out, but tickets are available for the George and Taylor Theater. So the George and Taylor Theaters, they're basically simulcasting the movie. Um, the reason that the uh, Carper Theater tickets are sold out is because the cast will actually be here. So that's really cool. So they're going to do like yeah. a talk and all that stuff. So the place where you can sit with the stars and Judy and hear them talk about the movie, that part is sold out. But if you want to go sit in one of the theaters at the Tropic Cinema and watch the simulcast, those tickets are still available. I think they're 150 bucks each or something yeah. like that. So if, uh, I don't know, Rachel McAdams yeah. or Judy Bloom, if you're listening, you want Living in Key West to go live mm -hmm. from your red carpet event. Yeah, we'd love to. We will do that free of charge. Yep. Also, just in case they're not listening, rare chance, uh, go ahead and reach out to them, guys. Let them know Living in Key West be more than happy to go live from their event. Yeah, we really did want to go, but not. I don't think we want to go to the simulcast. We want to go no, to like yeah, the, to go to the premiere the and main, the, yeah, yeah, the main absolutely. one. But so that tickets cool. were gone. We couldn't get them. Wah, wah, wah. Yep. So that's on Friday, and um, oh, and the other thing that I thought was kind of cool was the South Florida Symphony at ten will be at the Tennessee Williams Theater. So the South Florida Symphony Orchestra closes its twenty. 2022 and 2023 25th anniversary season in Key West with uh, an evening program. The program features um, this, I, I can't, it's a, it's a name I can't pronounce. Um, his love letter to America, New World Symphony, as well as the greatest of all. It? Sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. As well as. There's the, no way I could do it if you can't. It, I, I feel like it may be. It's all right. It's, yeah, I don't know. Keep, keep it moving. Vorak, Evening of Vorak Masterworks. Um, well, that sounds definitely how I would have said it. So. As well as the greatest of all cello concertos, cello concerto in B minor, performed by Zul Bailey, who also appeared during the Key West Symphony's inaugural concert 25 years ago. Anyways, that was a very long and choppy way of saying the South Florida symphony will be at the Tennessee Williams theater on Saturday, March 25th. And I think that sounds like it could be a really cool thing to go to. So there's some other stuff too, but a lot of it's just like little stuff. Yes. Yeah, symphonies and, and movies and a yeah. lot of it's Tennessee Williams related. So I think the coolest thing personally is the Judy bloom. Oh yeah. Thing easily on Friday, but yeah. Yeah. So. So that's you guys, what's going on this week. I don't know. Maybe petition enough. Maybe we'll be there for you guys. <laughs> go on live. Another cool thing is when we went to our inspection at, in Key Colony Beach, uh, the house is on the water, and the at the dock there was two big nurse sharks. Oh my sharks gosh! I about just that. straight up chilling. They were literally like napping. They were. They were taking a little nap. I've never seen that. I've never seen yeah, that I in, mean, in Key Colony. 
I haven't seen them like that. I have right. seen them in Key Yeah, Kong. yeah. I'm not saying I've never seen a shark in Key Kong. I've, I'm saying I've never seen... Them sleeping right like that, just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was like, it was really cool. Because they'll be in like lobster holes a lot. But, yeah, 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 um, yeah. And they're just chilling there. But yeah, as far as uh, that, no, I have not seen that. Yeah. They're right underneath the mangroves. Yeah, it was really cool. Hanging out. Mm -hmm. They're literally, you know how when otters, uh, when they go to sleep, they hold paws, <laughs> so they which don't is how me and Stephanie sleep Yeah, we always hold paws. Um, but yeah, Stephanie holds Winnie's paw, I hold Perry's paw. And then we hold each other's paw. And paws. then we hold each other's paw, yeah. so we make sure none of us roll off the bed. <laughs> um, but you know how they like hold paws when they go to sleep so they don't lose, so they don't float away from each other? It's kind of like that, because they were like, they were snuggling. They it really was like were. like two... two uh, Nurse sharks, not yeah, going away. Take a little snooze. So, yep. Anyways, I thought that was kind of cool. It was cool. Um, to see that. So, well, I think it's very exciting because I think you potentially have some fishing and lobstering in your future as well. We'll talk about that later. But yes, we'll talk we, about that at a, a later date. At a later date, but yeah, some cool stuff coming up. Yeah. So, is that it? Probably not, but I think. For now, anyways, we'll if we forgot anything, we'll tell you next week. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. We got uh, do what? Do we have anything coming up this week? I mean, we got a lot going on with uh, the house that we're uh, mm -hmm. with our mm -hmm. buyers, but um, other than that, I mean, we got some stuff here and there. We got a couple of little uh, real estate mm -hmm. courses we're taking. Mm -hmm. and, uh, learning, mm -hmm. and, uh, do got take Naya back to the vet mm -hmm. and yeah, we're interviewing Mark. Oh, we're interviewing Mark. Yep. So that'll be, uh, entertaining. Yeah. And yeah, and maybe I we'll think get some rain tonight. we're, uh, making some progress on our, uh, the rental arm of our we are. business. So that's exciting. We'll tell you guys more about that as we can, but that is in the works and, we're figuring it out. So yeah, probably work on that a little bit this week too. So we can rent you guys some places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> sell you guys some places. Hey, and rent tomorrow, you guys some places. yeah. Sell, rent, buy. Yeah. Tomorrow is going to be absolutely freezing cold here. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, where are we at? Key West. Key West. Yeah. 71. As the high. Is the high. Yeah. We should probably cover our orchids tonight. Burr. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go we gotta go cover order so anyways <laughs> we're rambling now but uh that's it remember guys real estate agents you ever thought about anything down here in the florida keys reach out to yeah. us um ways to get a hold of us in our uh youtube so thank you very much and uh we'll see you guys later bye bye